Hey everyone, hope everybody's enjoying their quarantine. While I'm enjoying my quarantine, I'm gonna spend it here in my shop. I'm gonna do a couple videos about how to set up a hardwire MIG welder. Then I'm also gonna set up a flex core MIG welder. And then I'm gonna do a couple welding demonstrations. I'm gonna do a welded lap joint and then I'm also gonna do a welded T joint. Um, stay tuned and I hope you enjoy this. First video. I'm gonna go over a couple things that you're gonna need to weld up some test plates here. First, you're going to need a welding helmet. I have a, a Miller Digital. Um, it's an auto darkening lens, so when you strike an arc, that's when it darkens for your weld. And then when it's not welding, it's clear so you can see through the screen properly. Then I'm also going to use some, a welding respirator. It's a 3M respirator to help not have black crap in my lungs and to survive to my retirement. So I use this daily, just put some new filters in it, um, definitely don't weld anything without it. I'm going to have a tape measure, really like this tape measure. Um, then you're going to need some gloves. I'm also going to show you how to use this thing. This is a, it's called a feeler gauge. It'll tell you how thick your material is that you're welding and it'll also tell you how thick your wire is that you're welding with. I'll show you how to use that going to need a crescent wrench to tighten down your gas for your welder and then I have some test plates here already cut out and ready to go. Okay so here's my welder. I have an ESOB MIGMASTER 250. Um, right here is the front panel. You can see up top here is the wire feed speed that will adjust and then we have a fine tune adjustment and then we also have a coarse adjustment. Um, the on off switch. This cable right here coming out is your lead that goes to your trigger where the wire comes out and you weld. This right here is your ground cable. It's clamped to our table as you can see. So here's our gas. We're going to use a mix 30. So it's 75% argon, 25% carbon dioxide. Right here we have our regulator. You would uh, put your crescent wrench on here, tighten it up. Um, so right here on the regulator shows how much pressure is in your tank. Um, see how full it is, so open that up. So that little ball that came up is how much pressure you have in your line for when you're welding. Um, I'll show you how to set what you want your pressure at for what you're welding with. So in here, Open up the side panel here. Here's the inside of the welder. The wire. Here's your welding chart. So right here is where your feeler gauge would come into handy. Obviously this one is labeled so we're going to use 035 wire but if you didn't have that label on there you can use this. So you'd put this on here. Fits on the 035. So right here I have a piece of, um, it's really dirty right now, but it's a piece of uh, scotch bright because sometimes when your your wheel is sitting in your shop it'll get moisture on it it'll get a little rusty and that'll keep it clean before it goes into your into your lines before you weld just a little tip for you so I already know that our material is gonna be a quarter inch thick so if you didn't know what your material thickness would be can use this gauge and you can check your material thickness so quarter inch so right here we'll go quarter inch we're using 035 wire so we're gonna come over here so it's gonna be a number two for the fine range setting and then medium for the coarse range setting and then 4.5 for the wire speed so after we figure out what we need that's when we'll come over here and set all of these. So that's set. So we know that we're using 035 and now we can set our regulator. You want your regulator to be set at the same pressure that your welding wire is. So we're using 035 so we want our regulator to be set at 35. So some welders inside that door, they'll have um, like a toggle switch where you can just like press it and it'll 
feed gas out so you can set your gas but when you pull the trigger it'll also come out and then we'll fine tune it with this you turn it either way whether you need more or less as you're pulling the trigger i don't have that many hands to do that on camera but you kind of get the all right now that we have our welder all set up we can suit up and get ready to weld um i put on some welding sleeves i really like these sleeves because then i don't have to wear a full jacket um, or full leathers and like sweat my butt off. It's kind of warm in here, so I'm okay with that. Um, you're gonna want some gloves, some thicker gloves because the MIG welder has sparks and it gets hot. Also gonna wear my respirator and my welding hood. Um, so before we so actually I go set over up. the MIG torch, so this is the whole torch. This is your trigger, so you pull that and your wire will come out of here. So this outside piece right here is your gas cup. The inside piece right here is your uh, contact tip. You want to make sure that these stay clean so that your gas can flow freely and that you don't get porosity in your welds. So we'll keep those clean. Um, they have MIG pliers that you can scrape the stuff out from inside here. Like I have a little piece here. Just kind of flicks off because um, it doesn't weld it to it. It just sticks to it. Um, so I will fire things up and I'll tack some pieces together and show so you what I'm So one more piece of information I want to tell you is the inside of your hood. It's kind of backwards. That kind of sucks. But um, in here, you can adjust your, your darkness for your filter for your shade of your, um, your welding mask. For a welding mask, you at least want it to be a shade 10. I prefer a shade 11. That's just my personal preference. Um, I also have it on a sensitivity of three with a zero delay. So as soon as I strike an arc, it goes dark um, so that I don't burn my eyes or anything like that. So it's going to get kind of loud. I'll try to edit the video so that uh, you don't hear it welding. Maybe we'll put some music in there. So I'm going to turn on the welder. I'm going to tack some pieces together so we can do a lap joint. And then I'm also going to do a T. <laughs> first tried to tack that t-joint together that it didn't go through is because I didn't clean my material and it has mill scale on the outside of it and I also have paint on my welding table so it didn't ground out properly so I kind of scraped it so it would go through it and um, ground out a little bit better so that it would tack it. Um, I'm gonna try to edit this video because this this is not going well but anyways I'm gonna run a couple beads and then I'll take some pictures and uh, that's it. That's how you make weld. You pull the trigger and I'll have some technique videos next. We all know what young girls think about. just welded a t-joint here and I also welded this lap joint little inconsistent kind of ran out of room with my elbow but there's a couple welds for you um, I hope you enjoyed this video